I guess like one of the most common questions um, that I've gotten since we've been working on this exhibition and after it's opened is, um, you know, why, why this group of artists and what is the common thread, uh, you know, between this group because everybody's styles really are so diverse and, you know, it's not like a, you know, there's not really an aesthetic, like a very defined aesthetic trend through, through all the work. It's more of an attitude, I think, than anything else in my opinion, and so I wanted to... Uh... As far as graffiti goes, you can get your supplies pretty much free. You can get to say what you want and do what you want without any permission granted or any proposal granted or anything. It's you know, really remarkable uh, medium for that. It's, you know, of course it's a little self-aggrandizing, but, you know, once you get past that and go into the post, graffiti experience and get some really cool, you still keep a lot of really cool energy and a lot of cool ideas that, that emanate from graffiti. You know, I think between cities and graffiti and the way people dialogue with the world around them is, is a, a very much in evidence in a lot of the work that I see upstairs. Graffiti is like so, you know, it creates so much anger in the populace. People really treat it as like a personal attack against them. When it's a fairly innocuous expression of self, you know, it's just people just saying, hey, I'm here, you know, and I'm taking over this space and I'm doing something with it. There was nothing on this space before and I'm putting something here. And so graffiti is very threatening to the power structure. It causes a lot of problems. And even, you know, for like the last 10 years, I've done very, very pleasant, very quiet graffiti. And, and even in my approach, it was like always just developed like such strong feelings of people. People really took it personally and created all types of havoc in my personal life. But it was wonderful, you know, it was really like a great thing to see how things work and like how far you could push it. And at one point, it, there's a tipping point where the cops come, you know, it's just like, and you get paranoid, you think, oh, they're never coming for me. Come on, give me a break. And then they're in your apartment like, going through your stuff. You're like, wow, I am somebody. Um, <laughs> West Coast, it was strictly fucking spray, uh -huh. and it was just a strict script, uh -huh. you know, by tradition. But New York, we had uni wides, we uh -huh. had flow masks, we discovered these things, chisel points, and all these things, and we started getting really ornamental with them and started creating different ways to use them. Uh -huh. you know, like, and then, like, you can, yeah, actually, geography does play a part in, into uh -huh. the whole game because, like, like if you're from Queens, yeah. I know you're from Queens by your hand style. If you're from the Bronx, I know you you know, crews and clicks had their own hand styles, you know, that's what that differentiated the, the, the next man from the other, you know what I'm saying? So like styles, I mean like when Barry went down to Brazil and blah blah blah, you know, he came back with some serious shit. And uh, and I mean there was like a lot of players in that. I mean like there was like cats that were just so tired of the run of the mill, like the same old wild style, the same old shit, using different mediums was just like a natural course of that. It's like, yo, this is like... It was kind of the collaborative piece up on the roof. And um, it was a naked man. Kind of uh, my statement was being that it's tradition to objectify women in these institutions and in billboards walking down the street or in magazines or anywhere. Um, in our history, it's okay to object, it's tradition to do that, but for men it's not. And that's a huge, the sexism issue is a huge one for me. And um, you know, the naked man was just kind of my blatant metaphor, like down to the brass tacks of what the issue was. And uh, you know, it wasn't acceptable. Therefore, the red underwear. <laughs> How many minutes did it last? It lasted 30 minutes. And, and I, you know, I, the cops were super nice, and they even got it, and they were like, there's nothing I've seen about a naked man, you know? And I just, I was just so frustrated with the fact that, like, I don't have a voice when I have to walk down the street. It's just so one-sided. Like, even being heckled as a woman, like, I open my mouth, I'm alive to them all of a sudden and then something for me to play with. I close my mouth and I'm gagged, you know, and it, it was so freeing to go up there and do that.
When I started skateboarding in 1985, skateboarding wasn't what you see today. You know, all these big corporations are co-opting skateboarding to be cool. In my years as a skateboarder, I, the thing I noticed most often is that a lot of the kids that I was hanging out with and skating with when I first started were from broken homes. Almost every friend that I was skating with all came from broken home, me included. And it was an individual, creative thing. There was no rules in skateboarding. You could do what you wanted, when you wanted. You could leave your front door with your skateboard and do whatever you wanted on the flat ground or at this local schoolyard or wherever. And uh, I think that's what attracted creative people. Anybody who was completely not feeling the way you were supposed to be in life, team sports, football, whatever it might have been, kind of found skateboarding. So it was a big collection of ragtag people. And the thing that drew me in, I was a total nerd in school, um, playing ninjas and stuff, and <laughs> everyone's really cool and doing their surfing or whatever. I'm really going to Beach, California, and surf in USA. So if you weren't a surfer, I didn't have enough money to buy a surfboard, but I could easily get a skateboard put together. Instantly, the punker kids who had skateboards accepted me in the group, and that was the best feeling I ever had. And I don't know, I guess that's, one thing why creative people come out of skateboarding. What is happening here is 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 really a historical event. This is this is the the, the perfect case of the kids getting the keys to the kingdom. And it doesn't happen very often. And so as you're walking through that Look at it, enjoy it, be entertained by it, be angered by it, feel whatever you feel, but be very grateful for it too, because especially considering the topic we talked about today and the things that are happening in our world, it really is rare that someone can set this. So, and thank every, thank everyone for coming, and Christian, and the CAC, the staff of the CAC have been awesome, and we put them through the ring. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah.